Hi, this is David Harper, Bionic Turtle. I wanted to briefly illustrate expected shortfall. Expected shortfall is a risk measure, which is an alternative or a complement to value at risk or VAR. And it has the advantage over VAR of being coherent. To illustrate, I'm going to use two examples. The first one is the standard normal distribution. Standard normal means we have a mean of zero and a variance of one. And here we've computed the value at risk at 95% confidence. So that's a typical VAR question, which is to say, with 95% confidence, what's our worst expected loss? And the answer is given by the inverse cumulative distribution function, or better, let's just say the quantile. And that means, that's right about here, that if, if our normal distribution does in fact characterize the random variable, that 95% of the time we expect the loss to be no worse than 1.645 standard deviations. I have losses over here to the right as positives. There's another way to state the value at risk, which might even be better, and that is to say, if the 95% confidence value at risk quantile is 1.645 standard deviations right here, that means that we expect 5% of the time, or with 5% probability, the loss to exceed the quantile of 1.645 standard deviations. That means 5% of the time we expect the loss to be here in the tail. And therein lies the rub because VAR is not giving us any information about what that loss is in excess of the VAR. It's simply telling us that 5% of the time we expect it to be at least this bad or worse. But we're not telling you anything about the magnitude in excess of that quantile. That's what we have expected shortfall. And expected shortfall, you'll notice right here, is a conditional probability. So it's the expected loss conditional on the loss exceeding the quantile. So in this case, with 95% confidence, so the expected shortfall needs a confidence just like VAR. Now we're saying, if the loss does in fact exceed the quantile, so conditional on the loss exceeding the quantile, what is the expected loss? So what is expected shortfall getting for us? Well, really, simply, it's just the expected or average value of the loss in the tail. It's taking only this area here in the tail and finding the average value here. That's all this integral is doing here. So, so in the case of the standard normal, with 95% confidence, here's the cutoff for the VAR, that's at 1.645, and then here's the expected shortfall. I don't need any additional parameters. Uh, given the 95% confidence, I know where the quantile is, it's at 1.645, the expected shortfall is at 2.063, or right about here. That means conditional on the loss exceeding this quantile 1.645, our expected value or the average value of the red tail here falls at 2.063. That's the expected shortfall. And you can see that gives us information about the expected loss in the tail. But of course, it's only the average of the tail. The loss can still be further to the right. So that's for the standard normal. And now an example with just a, a simple Bernoulli, a discrete random variable of a single bond with a face value of 100. And let's assume the probability of default is 2%. That means the probability of the bond repaying is 98%. And again, we're going to ask about the value at risk and the expected shortfall with 95% confidence. So this example might be easier to illustrate, to uh, comprehend. So now just imagine we have 100 outcomes sorted top to bottom. I'm not showing the first 90, only down here at the bottom. Our, pro our bond will either default or not default. So at 90% or the first 90 outcomes, we're, we have a no default scenario. Also at 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98. 98 times out of 100, we expect no default on the bond. Two times out of 100, so that's here at 99 and almost 100, 
we do expect the bond to default. That's our two default occasions out of 100 total, 2% probability of default. So in that case, we have a 1 instead of a 0. Assuming no recovery, we're going to lose the full face value of 100. Now, what is the 95% value at risk of the single bond? Well, it's right about here, plus or minus, depending on your rule. The 95% VAR for this bond with a 2% probability of default is 0 because the probability of default is, up, is down here at 2%. That is to say, 95% of the time, we expect to lose nothing on the bond. So you can see VAR's a little bit limited here because we do have these extreme outliers. Now the expected shortfall. The expected shortfall says what's the average loss conditional on exceeding the VAR. So in that case, if we exceed the quantile, we have five occasions here that constitute the 5% tail. See how 95% confidence corresponds to a 5% tail. Now in that 5% tail, because there's a 2% probability of default, that means uh, if we think about it in terms of 100 outcomes, we have three of those five that are still no default, and two of the five which are default, because two of the 100 are default. And now the expected shortfall says, conditional on the loss being here in the tail, then what's the average loss? Well, we have two out of five as default. That's 40% or $40 out of the bond's face value. So our expected shortfall with 95% confidence is a $40 loss. See how the $40 loss is simply an average of five outcomes where three are zero and two are a full default, full loss of 100. So the 40 gives us a weighted average and a little bit better sense as to what the uh, average or expected loss in the tail will be. So that's the illustration of expected shortfall. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.